You're listening to the Write Project Podcast and Radio Program, a show about writing and modern Newfoundland author culture. This program is produced and recorded at CHMR FM 93.5 FM in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador, and is aired on other great stations in the province and elsewhere in the country. It can also be heard online at www.chmr.ca. I'm your host, Matthew LeDrew. Welcome to a very special episode of the Write Project Podcast. Today, we've got a host of authors on to answer one of the most frequent questions that's asked of any author. We're asking them, how do you select names for your characters? And today to answer, we have on Kelly Power, contributing author to Chillers from the Rock and What's Written in the Ladies. How do you select names for your characters? Because I feel like no author does that the same way. That's a really interesting question because I've put a lot of thought into that. And what I find is the first time I go through first drafts of things, I'll just kind of let the name be whatever comes into my head, which is usually the name of somebody I know because those names come most easily. And recognizing that that was both very limiting because I don't know that many people and not terribly helpful. I've gotten baby name books out from the library. Yep. And the other day, I asked my dad to bring me over an old phone book for Newfoundland. Yes. So anything that's last name oriented for pieces I write based in Newfoundland, and I mean, obviously, last names in our phone book will apply to other places as well. But specifically, if I'm working in Newfoundland, um, working on Newfoundland pieces, the phone book for last names. Yeah. I um, I am famous for just taking one album and then another album and picking a random producer from that album and using their first name and a random producer from another album and using their second name. Fantastic. And just being like, there you go. And what I find really interesting is that, because there are authors, I'm sure, who look through, I know, for instance, my co-author on Infinity goes through and every name has like significance like she figures out where she wants to go with that character and you know if they're secretly a princess then they're going to be named sarah because sarah means princess you know what i mean and that not that exactly but that sort of thinking where it's like the name is reflective Mm -hmm. what i find really hilarious is the amount of times i've picked names at random and then afterwards gone and like for fun on a baby names database and looked up the names and realized no this was actually correct Mm -hmm. like uh there's a lead character uh alex in one of my books uh alexander and turns out alexander means hero of the people and i'm like oh what a good name for a protagonist that worked all right i i do find that it's like i tried the the online databases for baby names because i mean you don't need a book from the library but i i found that the sort of alphabetical yeah. way of having to go through them. It's like, I don't like that. I like That's why I get the book. Because yeah. I, I like to be able to flick open too. Because there is something... I don't necessarily go for the meaning of the name. You know they do print books of baby names, right? Yeah, that's what I get. Yeah. That from the library, that's what I'll oh, okay. get. The, the print book from the library. Yeah. So I, I don't go for the meaning of the name. But I don't like it to be totally random. There'll be something that will happen when I see a name and I say it even maybe. And it's like, that feels right. For that character so it's a feeling thing whatever whatever way that plays itself out and that's why i need the ability to browse because like mm, no i'm feeling this is like a hard consonant name and then i go to that yeah uh if it's a villain name there's got to be three syllables Interesting. like you've got to have the ability for when the um when your hero yells at the person it's got. It can't be just like Kelly. It's got to be Maximus. Like you've, it's got to be that epic, like three syllable thing where it has a chance to start, go up, and then come back down. Love it. Yeah. What is your favorite character name that you didn't come up with, like a from a novel, like just a name of a character? It's like, oh yes, that. That's a good question. Can I give you mine? Yes. It's from a uh, Neil Stevenson novel called Snow Crash. Love that book. Can't recommend it enough. The hero protagonist's name is Hero Protagonist. Like, first name, (laughs) H-I-R-O. Second name, Protagonist. 
<laughs> and I'm just and it's like, not at all on the nose. No. I mean, that that person could have any role in that book. Uh, yes. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember starting the book and going, no. Like, I almost put it down. I was like, no, you can't be serious. It's an amazing book. And you, you forget the character's name a few times and they come back and remind you it's like what's your name protagonist what protagonist hero protagonist no really what's your name sir <laughs> like <laughs> it is hero protagonist yeah. i actually don't have a good answer for that um yeah i i, I couldn't say you can't top hero protagonist i mean there's that, there is no topping that in, in any case that's the best <laughs> oh my um thank you very much Next on the line, we have Jed McKay, a storied author for Marvel Comics of all places. He has written three volumes of his ongoing series, Black Cat, a spinoff of the popular Spider-Man franchise. He's also currently writing Taskmaster, a villain series focused on the villain from the upcoming Black Widow movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And he's written short fiction for Dystopia from the Rock. Jed McKay, how do you select the names of your original characters? Uh, it depends. Uh, for side characters that I'm not particularly bothered about, um, especially for something that's going to see publication like a comic book, I'll generally use the names of my friends or uh, family or acquaintances. Okay. Uh, one, because it's easy, and two, because it's, you know, it's fun to see your name in print. Sure. Uh, as far as names for more central characters, uh, it, it really depends. Uh, sometimes you have a name that just kind of like pops to your head immediately. Other times I just go back to uh, just sort of my, my junk notes file where I would just write down things that come to my mind, be they, you know, things or people's names or places or ideas, and just kind of scroll through until I find something that works. Okay, that's good. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Chelsea B., author of London Calling and Christmas Mornings. How do you select the names of your characters? Oh, of characters? I love naming characters. That's probably my favorite part of writing. So baby naming websites help. In um, London Calling, there are so many different Shakespearean references that the characters, either every character name or personality were inspired by a Shakespeare character. So I, you know, in London Calling, I was in between things that could also realistically be used in real life. So for her name, it was between Viola and Olivia, and his was between Duncan and Malcolm. And those are just the two that I picked. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have author Shannon Green. Shannon Green is a gifted author with a talent for the strange and has been recognized in both the genre community and the contemporary literary community for his pursuits. Green has received praise for his stories The Wine Dark Sea, as well as his stories in Fantasy from the Rock, Dystopia from the Rock, and The Flights from the Rock. Thank you for joining us, Shannon. Uh, how do you select the names of your characters? Um, I've got a bad habit of a lot of them are synonyms for my own name, especially the main characters. Um, it started as just a little joke, but I often will uh, just run through Google and, okay, my name means green. It's a color. Yep. yep. What, what else is green? So I'll look up synonyms for green or names that mean green. Um, sometimes the name just will be picked on something randomly around me. But it is kind of a running thing in my stories that has become a joke between myself and Lisa that most of the characters are named after me in some way. And then friends who have picked up on it are just like, Okay, which one is named after Shannon this time? <laughs> so it, it's a little challenge to a lot of them, too, to pick out which which name means the same as Shannon does. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have John Dobbin, best-selling author of The Starving. Uh, how do you select the names of your characters? Uh... That is interesting. With the Western Weird West, I actually just 
came up with a list myself of names that sounded like they came from the Wild West, you know? But the novel that I'm working on now, I kind of wanted to have a bunch of different cultures represented by different cultures within the book itself. So I searched up online some, uh, some names, and each of the names I chose had a meaning attached to them, and I chose that for each character based on the meaning of the name. Okay, so you're picking names based on almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy, where if it's yeah. like like Alexander means um, hero of the people, so yeah. that would be a good yeah. hero. Like I have, I have one character who has three or four different names in the book based on the people he's interacting with. I see. And uh, one of his names means outsider. Okay. Uh, when he's acting in one part of the world, but when he goes to another part of the world, it means warrior. He cha- His name changes, what they call him. Interesting. So, yeah, like it kind of goes like that. Interesting. Okay. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Rebecca North, author of Elliot and the Impossible Fish from Breakwater Books. How do you select names for your characters, Rebecca? Um, the past... Two books, so A Picnic at the Lighthouse and Elliot and the Impossible Fish. I just really liked those two names, and that's how I chose them. Um, and Elliot is just kind of like, I felt like it suited his character. You know, he's this uh, he's this boy that is not taking no for an answer. He's he's determined. He's uh, but he's also kind of fun. You know, he's he's and I just felt like Elliot really really suited that. You know, you wouldn't call him. I'm trying to think of a name that he definitely wouldn't be like a Walter or, you know, um, I don't, actually maybe don't play that in case there's any Walters out there. Um, my brother's name, middle name is Walter. Um, but, uh, yeah. So I, I, I just felt like that name suited him and the little girl in Nanny's kitchen party actually doesn't have a name. I didn't give her one. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. But if I had, uh, had, given her a name i think it would have been charlotte i feel i feel like charlotte really suits her yeah but i I didn't uh specifically give her a name that's fair and that way kids can kind of like impress on it themselves you Mm -hmm. know what i mean there's there's two things that i like in names in children's books there's when the main character doesn't have the name and the kid can just kind of think it's them you know what i mean uh yeah but then on the other side Like, I remember my little sister Morgan, when she was young, really loving this book called Morgan the Magnificent, and just because it's, like, it's tailored to them, you know? Like, or they feel like it is. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, I've met a number of boys named Elliot. It it seems to be a popular name right now, and they're like, this is me in the book, that's my name. So, it is kind of, it's fun when that happens. Yeah. Kids are interesting with their names. My goddaughter is named um, Maya, Mm -hmm. and she's wonderful. And when she turned two, we had a big birthday party for her at my my parents' house. And they've got this huge yard and a trampoline and all this stuff. So we we, Yeah, so we had her there. And just by coincidence, uh, my sister's little puppy is also named Maya. I say puppy, oh, but the dog is 10 years old, so it's older than the child was. And she couldn't wrap her head around, the the, the girl couldn't wrap her head around that the dog had the same name as her. And I walked around the corner at one point and saw the little girl petting the dog. And I was like, oh, that's sweet. And as I got closer, I heard what she was saying. She was petting this dog, saying, nice me, good me. <laughs> That's hilarious. Because That's they great. have the same name, so they're the same person. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that is, that's fantastic. I've heard, um, I did a psychology degree in, um, for my undergrad, and I, I had learned that somebody having the same name as you, like, makes you like them more, and I wonder if, if uh, a book has the same same name as as somebody you know or as yourself as if the child also would like the book more i I think probably they would feel more connected to it yeah absolutely thank you very much next on the line we have amanda labonte author of the call of the sea and supernatural causes series how do you select names for your characters i have a couple of 
different things that I do. Um, sometimes a character comes to me with a name. Um, that's just their name. Okay. Like that's just how they arrived. Uh, usually my, my main character, that's how they appeared. So Alex was always Alex. Okay. Um, Ben went through a couple of different names, but, um, always started with a B. I always, um, the concept with them was they're they're twins. And and in the, in, when you're going through an ultrasound generally with twins, it's baby A, baby B. So they were always A and B, um, because their twin connection was always really important. Um, but sometimes I will name a character like in honor of somebody I know. Yeah. Um, so it's not necessarily that they're based on that person and either that person is no longer with us and can't say anything or they, they've given me permission to do that. Yeah. Um, and then also I will go back, particularly for secondary characters, I'll go back through the list of popular names from like, however many years ago yeah. that character is to make sure that like, you know, if I, if I want to name like a, if I want to give like a popular girl, like in school, a name, like, you know, I, I go back and I look at like, well, what was, what were the popular names yeah. from so many years ago? So that, you know, I, I know what the popular names were when I was in high school, but like what all the popular girls were named, you know, like the Britneys and, that kind of thing, but I want to go back and and the Briannas, and I want to I want to go back and capture that. So cool. I'll use the yeah. It's annoying though because when you do that in your Google search, then all of a sudden like you got all these ads for baby paraphernalia because yeah. they think that you're looking for baby names for for that reason. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Next on the line we have Tyon Collective author Susan McDonald. Uh, Susan McDonald, how do you select names for your characters? Oh, that's so painful. That is just so painful. And you know what? The name comes first. That's fair. Everything, yeah, everything hinges on the name. It's, uh, that is the weirdest thing. Um, But everything for me hinges on the name. Once I've got the name, I'm good to go. That's kind of true in real life, too. And I, and I just, I just agonize for ages over the names. Uh, not so much male names, but female names. I just, oh, I just really agonize over it. I don't know why. That's just one of these weird quirks. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Diana Brown, author of Saltwater Joys. Um, how do you select the names of your characters? How do I select the names? So, interestingly, um, I just have lists of names that I like. Yep. Um, and sometimes I don't realize that they're connected to people I know. Yep. <laughs> and so, for instance, some of uh, the names in here, um, John was in my book is um, my grandfather. Okay. But it's not about him. I just really love the name. Yeah. And it really suited the um, character yeah. of John. So it's, uh, and then, for instance, um, some of the others, uh, I make sure I choose names that aren't associated with anyone. Yeah. Right? So if it's a character that is a little more... Well, it's hard for Newfoundland-centric know. stories because... It's hard for Newfoundland-centric stories because if you go too far off the mark, then it feels inauthentic. Like, yeah. there are names that get repeated a lot in yeah. Newfoundland. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of, I stay true to that. Yeah. But it's, and even like the last names, I I actually found some in like a graveyard. Oh. You know, so I just went for a walk and it's like, oh, I like that. Cool. And you know, it's not that person, but no, no, it's, no, of it's just, not. it just triggers the, no, that um, makes sense. not that I walk through graveyards very often, but. Of course you do. It's, uh, <laughs> I can tell by looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> For those who can't see, it's like black hair, black <laughs> lipstick. Um, very gothic, just, yeah. yeah. Very but gothic. I have a keen interest in um, yeah. in that kind of stuff. So it's just those little things. It's almost like um, I feel like sometimes I'm wearing a Velcro suit and something will stick and it'll stick with me, but then I'll use it when I'm writing. I had some embarrassing moments or still some embarrassing moments. My first few novels did not take place in Newfoundland. Okay. I, I, 
I have yet to write one that actually takes place in Newfoundland. Some some ideas are percolating. Yeah. I didn't have one in me for a long time. Yeah. This I started writing in a pre-internet age. Yeah. So uh, a lot of the last names that I use are last names that I was familiar with. So oh, okay, yeah. It's like, yeah, no, there are no persons in Maine. That's, oh, yeah. Come yeah. on. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Silly yeah. things. It's like, yeah. oh, well. Yeah. Stuff happens. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Suspension of disbelief. Yeah. I say there are persons in Maine. That Absolutely. is not the weirdest thing that happens in my <laughs> novel. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Candace Osmond, best-selling author of Dark Tides and Killer Me. Candace, how do you select the names of your characters? Um, one of the ways I do it is I watch TV and movies, and I... I wait for the the end credits yeah <laughs> and i just like scan through it and see names and last names that i like and, and you'll just, mix and match yeah and i'll i have like an ongoing note document in my phone that's just for name ideas and whenever i go to start a new book i go to that list and i'm like oh i'll use this name cross that off so i don't use it again and that's and brilliant gotta, yeah yeah, no, I, I actually do that too. I, I'm so happy to meet someone else who does that. I've been called crazy, but I do it with um, album covers. So if I I had like CDs or, or vinyls from back in the day, like before everything was digital, I would look at the like the fine print and go through like the producers and like the sound mixers and all that kind of stuff. Like not the main, not the artists, but like yeah. the people behind it all and yeah. mix and match the names. Because they have real names. Because usually the singers or the actors or whatever have fake names. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy to have a like-minded person. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have John Hass, author of The Reluctant Barbarian. John Hass, how do you select the names of your characters? Oh. Well, that, that is a fun question. Um mostly through names that I hear um, day to day. Yeah. I'll, I'll meet somebody and I'll be like, oh, what was that name? And I'll be like, oh, I like that name. And um, uh, friends of my, of my kids, I'll, I'll meet them and they'll, be, and they'll tell me their name and I'll be like, oh, that's a good name. I like that. And then my, my son will be like, oh, you're going to be a character in one of his books now. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. Next up, we have Ellen Curtis, who is the author of the Infinity series from Engine Books, as well as the editor of the From the Rock anthology. Uh, how do you select names of your characters? Uh, I have used a couple different methods before, sometimes name generators, um, baby name books. Sometimes I just, you know like the sound of something other times i look at the meaning um so you know i don't tend to do the like look at a sheet of paper and see what names are on it and then stick some things together kind of thing though i think that's kind of a cop out i may do that from time to time i may know that yeah yeah it's kind of a cop out thank you very much next up we have peter foot owner of fiction first used books the founder of the Genre Writers of Atlantic Canada page, and frequent contributor to the From the Rock anthology. How do you select names for your characters, Peter? Um, generally, I go to um, some baby name websites, and I can't, I can't remember some of the titles off the top of my head, but most, since I, I said most of my characters are emotionally invested or I'm emotionally invested with them, they're trying to portray a certain feeling or emotion. So what I do is I use uh, some of these websites backwards and plug in the emotion or the feeling and see what uh, they suggest for names. And um, so most of my uh, names are either um, connected to the emotion that I'm trying to convey or, in all honesty, um, they're people I know in real life, and they're kind of uh, an Easter egg to the people who know me. That's fair. Yeah, I know Which, a lot of people uh, that do that. Yeah, and um, 
uh, one another one of our members in our writers group. Um, he was uh, named in my story from Chillers last year. Oh, really? Yeah, Sam. Oh, uh, Sam Bauer. Oh, really? That was Sam. Yeah, that's yeah, cute. Does yeah. he know that? I don't know if he does. Oh, but, that's adorable. Uh, no. He's gonna be love. Yeah. He's gonna love hearing that. Okay, cool. Yeah. My character is reading a book written by him in my uh, Chiller submission oh, wow. last year. Cool. Fun, fun, fun. Okay. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Brad Dunn, author of After Dark Vapors. How do you select names for your characters? Hmm. So, uh, I try. I don't like to do the... Like, uh, <laughs> what's his name in uh, Lost... Christian Shepherd, like the overly allegorical names. Uh, Christian Shepherd. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I've never watched that show, but that's on the nose. Yeah. Um, have you ever heard? Uh, have you ever read the book Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson? I'm familiar with it. Yeah. Have uh, you know what the protagonist's name is? What is it? Hero protagonist. <laughs> well, I feel like that's <laughs> that's a little like joke. <laughs> <laughs> is it though? Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, so I don't it, it, they kind of sometimes I'll like just leave it as TK like to come yeah and then a name will kind of just present itself to me sometimes um, if I feel like I'm really drawing on like a person that I know yeah I'll use their name and then change set, it after and see, or yeah change it after something something like that ask forgiveness not permission yeah or and use their middle name yeah. something like that you know yep um one of my authors, we were chatting about this question, and they, they actually said something interesting. Um, they put a lot of thought into their characters' names. I don't at no. all. I just go. I put a lot of thought into character, and when it comes to name, whatever sounds cool. If they're an important character, if they're a not important character, who cares? Yeah. Um, honestly, mm. but um, they were saying they have a logic to it, wherein their nickname, like the character's nickname says a lot about who that character is. Because oh, chances yeah. are their friends or whoever gave them that nickname, so it reflects their personality. Yeah. But whatever their name is reflects back on their parents, reflects on mm. how they were raised, yeah. reflects on the last generation. So yeah. if you've got a stereotypical Christian name, then you right. probably, like a biblical name, that's a signifier that you came, whether or not you are or not, that's a signifier that you came from a household that was into those things. Yeah, for sure, yeah. I think... Yeah, I think I probably would have... That would have been something that I considered, but probably wouldn't have never, like, verbalized. Yeah. Right? Um, I think at one point in, in After Dark Vapors, I had I have a character who's comes from that kind of, like, upper-middle-class background. Yeah. I think at some point I, I might have Googled, like, what, have been, what would have been upper-middle-class names <laughs> at this ter- point in history, and, you know. Yep. Yeah, I use a lot of Google. In fact, like, it comes to a point where it starts to think that you're and I think having too, a baby. Like, like, it'll start to come up with, like, you're on so many baby name registries that it starts to come up with, like, ads for diapers. And right. it's like, no, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Google, we've externalized so much of our brains to the to Google. Uh, but I feel like as an author, you, you should have those instincts anyway. Like, if you're writing about a character in 19th century England, you probably wouldn't name him Billy Bob. You <laughs> might. You know? That'd be funny. <laughs> I kind of like that, actually. That sounds, that sounds like a lot of fun, to write a period piece and consciously <laughs> write all the characters so that they have names that they would not have had in there, just for comedic effect. Yeah. yeah. What's your name, Tim? Yeah. Definitely, like, it, it, you know, names definitely give a flavor, um, especially when you consider, like, regionality to names, if you start giving your name, character. Like, in fantasy, if you, if you give your characters, uh, like, a certain... Uh, nationality that has a certain uh, cadence cadence to it like and especially now we're like i think a lot of fantasy writers are trying to get away from that that medieval england style it's so know? hard so like what's well, the great one of the great ways to do that is to use names that aren't bartholomew yeah <laughs> eddard <laughs> it's yeah. the the authorian influence yes, on fantasy exactly. is still very there and it's one of the things that that I like I like when people get out of that in the yeah. genre like like there there's only so much experimentation you can do yeah. when the setting is predetermined yeah like I feel like even if you use so many of those conventions but then you give characters let's say like 
African style names that will give such a different like flavor to the story, yeah. you know? Yeah. Something to think about. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming on again for all of you. We'll be here again next week at four thirty Newfoundland time or online at chmr.ca. Please tune in and we'll talk more about writing culture in Newfoundland.